All right, we're going to get started now. Welcome again to another Microsoft Dynamics Serum training session. Very glad you could all join us today. I'm your host, Angelina. Um, I'm a CRM consultant at CRM Dynamics located in Mississauga, Ontario. Um, again, I always mention if you have any questions or comments, concerns afterwards, please feel free to take down my email. You can send me a quick email and I can either help you out quickly or send you in the right direction uh, in terms of answering any questions you might have later on. Today we're going to be covering basic customizations. So I'm going to show you how to create and edit entities, fields within those entities, creating the forms for them, as well as creating views. Now, with this in mind, some people will not be able to do all this that I, sh that I show you today, only because they don't have the right security role. So that is a limit depending how your organization is set up and who does the system admin and customizations of your system. So if you do notice that there's certain things you can't access, it's probably just due to that. Um, the less people that can edit system-wide customizations, the better. So depending how it's set up again, you may not be able to see all the sections that I go into today, but at least you'll have an understanding of how the customizations are done within your system and if you need to suggest any to the person who is your system customizer. So with that, I'm going to go right into it. I'm using an updated version of CRM here. So depending on the version you have, it may look slightly different. But as I always say, the concept is the same. And it also gives you a nice overview of the newer version of CRM in case you're on, you know, 2013, 11, or 4 even. So to start off, I'm going into the settings section. And this is where you'll get to all those system customization and setting areas. So what I want to do is go settings. And you'll see here in the drop down, I have this customization section. So I'm going to click on customizations. And you'll see here I have an option to customize the system. Another window pops up. And keep in mind that I'm going into the back end of the CRM system. So sometimes these things do take a little bit of time to load. It's not a quick load, but it's because it's loading everything from your system. And you'll see here that I have a list on the side that lists the components. And you'll see a bunch of other things down here. And entities is one of them. You'll see here it gives me a list of everything that's included in my CRM system. So for today, I'm actually clicking on the entities because that's the first thing we're going to do is we're, we're going to create our own entity. So you'll see here if I click on this arrow, I can expand and collapse this list. And you'll see there's a lot of the out of, out of the box entities such as account, contacts in here, opportunities and leads will be in here as well as some other ones. So this is also where you get at the customizations of those built in entities. Today, though, we're creating a new one. So I've selected the entity section here, and you'll see I have this new button on the side. Oops. Again, if I click off, it obviously takes a little time to load. Here we go. <laughs> I have a new button here, and what this is going to do, it's going to pop up another window where I can label my new entity. So display name. For today, I think it'll be fun to create an entity that has to do with dogs. Everybody likes dogs for the most part. So we're going to create a entity for holding data about dogs. So I'm going to call this dogs. You can also um, put in the plural name. So if I had just put the display name as dog, I could also have dogs down here. So it's up to you depending on the label of your entity. But I'm just going to call them both dogs. You'll see here it assigns an automatic name and that this is more just the back end name of this entity, so you usually don't have to worry about that. The display name is what will show up in your CRM system. And then I can put a description of what this entity is. So I can just say reads docs. 
you'll see here there's this areas that display this entity. These are the sections that this entity can show up in. So I'll click off here. And in your system, you know when you can select sales, service, marketing? That's what it's referring to. So I can actually say which one of these it will go into. And I can pick more than one as well. So I'm going to open this back up. I'm going to put this in sales as well as service. I'm going to keep it out of marketing. I could put it in the settings section as well, but there, I won't do that for today. You have some other options here to select depending on what works for the entity you're creating. Um, you usually don't have to do too much to these unless you really want to get customized into your system. But what I'm going to focus on is the data services section down here. So you'll see there's allow quick create. What that does is it enables the quick create forms you might have in your CRM system. I'm going to leave that out for now, but I can show you uh, what it does later when I do enable it. You'll see I've duplicate detection is turned on by default. And then auditing here. So auditing means if I turn this on for this entity, what it's going to do is I can then audit any changes that uh, happen to any fields that I enable on the form itself, which is really good for tracking um, in terms of any changes that are done. You can see who did it and when they did it and what the old value was before they changed it. So I'm going to turn this on. And then there's this Outlook mobile section. Um, so this enables it to be accessed on uh, mobile browsers uh, as well as the mobile app. So you can usually turn these on um, if this is how users will use your CRM and they want this entity available. Now, if someone did ask about defining entity, this is something we covered in our last um, training session in January and was just covering the basic terminology. But for CRM Dynamics, the entity just refers to the module. So a lead, or sorry, lead is an entity, contacts is an entity, accounts is an entity. So that's just the terminology for it, in case anyone was missing that. So once I've done this, I can just go save. And you'll see it'll take some time just to create. Now what this is doing, it's like creating a brand new table, like an Excel table in your CRM database. So it does take a bit of time to create a brand new one. So you'll see here now that I'm in this um, window here, which was again open from Customize the System, in my entities list, you'll see I have this new one that I created called Dogs. If I expand that, I'm going to have a bunch of options um, to add to this. So you'll see forms, views, charts, fields, keys, and then there's relationships and business rules here. So I'm going to show you a couple ways to do some customization within the entity itself. I'm just going to wait for it to load up here. So since I've selected just the name here, I have those settings that I uh, initially created. So I could, again, change the area that this is displayed in. But I'm going to leave all this as is. I could also change the name if you, know, you decided you wanted to name it something else later on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the field section here. So I'm going to click on that. And there will already be a few out-of-the-box fields that Dynamic Serum creates for you when you create a new entity but then I can add my own in depending on the data that I want to capture. So if I look down here, there's 19. It says one of 19, so there's 19 fields already uh, within this. I'm just going to expand the display name so we can see this. And then this is usually what I filter by because uh, it makes it very easy uh, to go by the, the display name of the field alphabetically. So you'll see here there's already the created by, created on date fields, 
a modified owner that just refers to the owner of the actual record within your CRM. So these are all just your basic fields that are necessary when um, dealing with any data within CRM. You'll see here though I have a new button at the top here. So I'm going to create a brand new field. And then I've got this new window up here to create a field. So for this one I'm going to call uh, breed. So you can capture the breed of the dog. You'll see there's a field requirement here and its default is optional. You also have the option to choose business recommended and what that'll do is it'll just put a blue uh, sign beside it to say users should fill this out. Business required uh, puts the red asterisk beside the field similar to how you see down here where it says um, I have to fill these things out. So depending on uh, what you want to enforce your users to do, you can change these settings and make this um, a field that has to be uh, filled in or just that you recommend they fill it in. Fill it in. I'm going to leave it as optional for this one. Again, um, you can put in a description of what it is. I think breed is pretty self-explanatory, but you can do that. There's the option here for field security. This is disabled by default. Uh, but you can enable it and what that does is it puts a security on the field so that um, once set in your security section only certain users could have access whether it's read and write or read only or that they can't see it at all so this is another um, security setting um, that we can cover or sorry that we will be covering in future training sessions but that's what it's referring to auditing you'll see is automatically enabled um, I can disable this if I don't really care about knowing all the changes that happen. Um, you don't want to have auditing enabled for all your fields, mostly because it then um, can increase the size of your database because it'll audit everything. So this is something to be or aware of so that you're not just auditing everything, you're only auditing the fields that you really need to know when changes are made by who and when. So I'm actually just going to disable this because I don't really need the auditing on this one. So here's where you get into uh, picking what type of field you're going to put in here. You'll see data type, by default it's single line of text, but you have these other options here to choose from. For this one, I'm actually just going to pick single line of text, so it's just a free text uh, field that anyone can type into. You'll see here it says format it equals text, but you also have the option to click things like email, URL, phone number. So this is how you get into some of the formats of that text field. But for this case, I'm just going to choose text. And then I can actually set the amount of characters within this one. 100 is the default, but I can go 10, I can go 200. It's all up to how much um, text you're going to enable users to put into this field. I'm going to leave it at, a, at 100 for this case. Once this is all done, I can just press save and close. And then it's going to refresh my list here so that you see breed. So that's one way to create a new field. I'm going to show you a couple different ways to do that as well. And one of the ways is when you're doing um, forms for this entity. So I'm going to switch over to forms on the side here. So you'll see I'm in, still in the dogs entity and I'm going to click forms. By default, you'll have a very simple form, um, but we're going to show you how to edit that. By default, they'll name it just information. This is a name I can change. And then again, you also have this new button up here if I wanted to create one from scratch. So I'm going to open up this default one. Make it a bit larger here. And you'll see here, there's really not much on it. <laughs> so again, it's got a name field. This is required because it's the name of the record. But for this case, you know, it could just be the name of the dog that people put in. Owner here refers again to the owner of the record. So this would be a CRM user. Whoever creates the record is automatically assigned as the owner, but you can assign these out as well. So that's all this refers to is the CRM user who is the owner of the record. By default, it puts this notepad, or sorry, note text field. Um, this doesn't necessarily have to be on here. 
but it is just a multiple line text field where I can just input data. So right now we're just looking at the editing version of a form. So you'll see here on the right side where it says Field Explorer, I've got the list of fields available to me. So there's two options at looking at this list. You'll see by default up here it says only show unused fields. So that's going to show me only the fields that have not already been put on the form over here. You can also just select that and then it'll show all the fields available to you. And this could be if you wanted to um, put the field on more than one section of your form that you would do that. Otherwise it's a good way to limit the amount of fields in this list and to know that you've already put one on the form itself. So from here, you'll see at the bottom of this section, there's also a new field button. So this is another way to create a new field. And it works quite well uh, when you're trying to edit a form or create a new one, that you don't have to then exit five other windows and then go and let other ones load. You can do it right from here to create a new field. So we're going to create a new field. And you'll see here, similar window that pops up to create my field. So let's create a different type of field. Uh, we're going to go for the size of the dog. So we'll put size as the, as the display name. And for this one, I'm going to just say recommended. And this is just so that you'll see what it looks like when it's actually on the form. Field security, I'm going to keep disabled. Auditing, I'm going to disable as well. Now when I get down to the field type, instead of picking line of text, I'm going to make it a pick list or what is called in here an option set. And this gives me the option to create different um, fields to select. So I'm keeping it simple. You can also use existing option sets. So let's say you have a system wide one that you might use in numerous uh, entities. So let's say something you would use in account as well as contact. You could also do that option. But this is specific to my dog's entity. So I'm going to keep it. Um, as use existing option set as no. Default value, um, this just assigns when someone opens up a new record what this field is assigned automatically. So you'll see it says unassigned. So I'm going to keep it that way so that it's blank until someone actually selects a value. And down here in this box is where you add your values. So I'm going to click the green plus sign for add. And you'll see on the right here it's, it has my label and it just calls it item by default. I'm going to change that. I'm going to put my sizes, so I'm going to put small. You don't usually have to worry about the value down here. It assigns them automatically. So I'm going to create another one. And you'll see here it just increases the value by one. So you shouldn't have to worry about um, that number down here. I'm going to call this medium. And I'm going to add one more for large size dogs. And you'll see here on the list it gives me a preview. I can also change um, how these are ordered. So if I select medium, oh sorry, if I select medium, I can use these green arrows here to move it up or down to the top. So that's how you can actually um, order your list as well. But I'm going to keep it small, medium, large. You also have the option to do it alphabetically, automatically, in case you have a long list. So that's these options here, ascending and descending alphabetically. So once I'm done that, I'm just going to go save and close again. It's going to create my new field. And you'll see here it updated on the right side. So down here I've got my size field. So we're going to create a couple more new fields before we get to editing my form. So I'm doing the same thing here. I'm at the bottom. I create new field and I get this window up here. So let's just create a couple new ones. I'm going to create hair color for the dog. I'm going to make this one business required, so they have to put in the color of the dog. I'll skip through field security. I'm going to turn off auditing because I don't need this audited. But I'm going to keep the data type as a single line of text. But I'm also going to decrease the length of it. So instead of having 100 characters, I'm only going to allow 50 in this case, so they can't type more than that. And I hope they wouldn't because that's a very long color for a dog. Very simple, just going to save and close. It creates my field and will refresh on the right side here again. You'll see here, hair color. 
Now I'm going to create a lookup field. So a lookup field means that it can look up to another entity. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a field for my dogs where it looks up to the owner of the dog, which would then be a contact within my system. So I'll show you what we're doing here. Display name, I'm going to say dog owner. And I'm going to make this business required as well so that they always fill in who the owner of this dog is. And you'll see down here, sorry, I'm going to turn off auditing as well as field security. Now for the data type, you'll see there's a lookup. It's right at the bottom here. When I select that, it changes the options here. So I have to select the target record type. This means which entity am I referring to that I'm going to look up to other records for. So it'll give me a list of everything available in my system. So for this case, I'm going to select contact. And you'll see here it gives it its own relationship name and it just references um, the contact who I'm looking up to as well as the um, current entity I'm in and then the field label name. You can change this if you'd like. It's really just a back-end database uh, reference. But again, if you want to edit it, you can do so as well. So I'm going to save and close this. And it's going to create it. Okay, we're going to create one more uh, field, and we're going to create a date field this time. So again, I'm clicking new field. And for this one, I'm going to have the date of birth. So I'm going to say date of birth is the display name. I'm going to make it optional. You'll see it again assigns its own um, database name here, but I can change this. So let's say in my system in the back end, I just want it to be DOB for date of birth. I'll turn off auditing. And then in the data type, here's where I can select the date and time field. So you'll see here it says date and time. I have the option to um, select what type of format. So by default, it selects date only, but you can also do date and time for this purpose, I'm going to select date only. But let's say you had, you know, you wanted it to be an appointment uh, date and time. That's where you would select this. So you get those two options. I'm going date only. You'll see there's this behavior um, type here. And you'll see it by default, it selects user local. So that's just to your local time zone. Um, but then you can also have the time zone independent. So you can actually set it to regardless of where you are in the world, that it'll be that day and time, um, regardless of what your local settings are. So by default, most people just keep it at, at user local. So I'm going to save and close. Okay, and I've got a few fields now that I want to add to my form. So you'll see here that there's a header section, and if I scroll down, there's actually a footer section. So these are separate from your body, obviously, of the form, and they will always stay on the page regardless of how you scroll. So just keep that in mind. If there's certain fields you always want to have viewable to the user, that's when you would use this header or footer section. For right now, we're going to focus on the body of my form. So I already have name here and owner, you'll see this lock symbol on the side. It means it can't be removed from this form because it's required to have on here. So even if I tried to remove this, it wouldn't let me. So even if I went up here and get remove, it'll say the field you're trying to remove is required by the system or business. So just keep that in mind when you see this lock symbol. Okay, so under name, I'm going to add my breed field. So there's a couple ways you can do this. You can do the drag and drop. So you can drag and drop, or as I selected, I can just double click and it will put it under the field that I have selected. If I want to move this around, I can actually just use the arrows on my keyboard. So if I press the up arrow, it's going to move it up and up. So I can move it down with the down arrows, and it will go to the side as well if I wanted to move it over this way. 
I'm going to move it back to the left here and keep it under name. So you'll see I've selected the breed field. So I'm going to now put in the size field right under it. So you'll see here on the right, I'm just going to double click and it's going to put it in underneath. Now I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this on your screen, but you'll see on the size field, it's got this blue plus sign beside it. And that's because I set this field as business recommended. So it's not required necessarily, but it's saying you should probably fill this out. So after this, I'm going to add hair color. I'm just going to double click. It's going to put it underneath. Then I'm going to put the dog owner. So that's that look at field to accounts right under there. And then lastly, I'm going to put date of birth. So right now, I've just got one little section here with all my fields. And what this is up here, where it says general, this is the tab that it's under. So I can actually add multiple tabs and they can expand and collapse. So depending how much stuff and how you want to organize your form, that's something else you can play with as well. The note section here, I don't think I'll really need, or at least I don't need it this big. So what I can do is when I open this, all you have to do is double click a field and it'll open the field properties. So see here, I have my display, so I can actually label this something else if I wanted it to be called something else. I also have the option to display the label on the form, and you can see this one is not. So the note text label here actually won't show up on my form, which is fine. You can lock it on the field, or sorry, lock the field on the form, which just means no one can remove it. As far as formatting goes, the tab up here, I can select how many columns it takes up. So I'm going to keep it at one because it's really a large field. But you'll see down here, there's this row layout. And see how it's set to 15? That's why it looks like it's it takes up such big space on my form. So I'm actually going to just narrow this down to 5 and press OK. And you'll see here, it made it much smaller. You can also play with the sizing of these sections here. So this is one section. This is another section. And the way you do that is you select your tab up here. So you'll see here there's a blue box around this general tab. If I double click that, it's going to open up the tab properties. So again, I can pick a different label. So instead of calling this general, I'm going to just say dog information. In the formatting section, this is where I can select the width of those sections. So you can see right now it's 33%, 66%. I can make this 50-50 and it automatically does it. So you'll see here if I press OK, it's changed the tab name to dog information, and you'll see it's made my sections equally, or sorry, the same width. Okay. Now before I continue on, I'm going to make sure I save this. So just at the top left, I press Save. Now before I publish this to my system, I do have the option to preview it as well. So I sit up here, preview. There's a couple options of how you want to preview it. I'm going to preview it as if I'm creating a new one. So you'll see here it opens up a preview window. And here's just a basic overview of what my form is going to look like when other users open it up. So here's my fields. See how it already assigns the owner um, of this record because I'm the user who opened it, so that's what it'll look like. And then there's this notes section over here. So I'm going to close out of that. Looks pretty good, pretty simple. And then just for safe, safe measure, I'm going to save and close. So I've created a bunch of new fields as well as edited a form. Now before like I mentioned, I publish this to the system. I have to actually click this button up here, publish all customizations. So even though I've saved everything I've done, it actually won't be viewable in my CRM until I've published it. So I have to click publish, and you'll see here it's publishing my customizations.
Okay, now I'm going to go back into my CRM over here. I'm going to look in my sales section. Oops, sorry, before I do that, I do have to refresh my window because I just published new ones. Of course, while I'm demoing, an arrow is going to occur. Sorry about that. <laughs> so I've just refreshed my CRM system. I'm going to go into my sales section. And you'll see here at the far right, I now have this extension section, which is any custom entity that I've created. And there we go. There's my dogs one. So I'm going to click on that. And of course, there won't be any data in there. So my list is going to show blank. But up at the left here, when I click new, it's going to open up that form that I created. And you'll see here about my form. So I'm going to put the name of a dog. Um, when I grew up, I used to have a dog named Rogue. And the breed was a Brittany Spaniel. So I'm going to put that in there. Size, you'll see here, this is that option set I created. So I can select the size of dog and click medium. Hair color, I have to put in because you'll see here it's got the red asterisk. And if I didn't put this in, it wouldn't let me save the record. So I'm just going to put white and brown. Dog owner, this is, as you can see, a lookup. And that's where you'll see this little search um, icon here. So if I, what I can do is I can either type in a name if I already know this person's a contact. So let's say I put in my name. I can just start with Angelina. And you'll see here it gives me the options of any contact with that name within here. So I'm already a contact. If they weren't already a contact in the system, you'll see here you also have the option to create a new contact record. Since I'm already here, I'm going to select myself. And you'll see this is a blue link. So anything that's blue like that means it's a link to another record. So if I click this, it would actually open up my contact record. Date of birth, you'll see here it gives me the calendar so I can select the date of birth. It also gives you the um, format of how you have to put it in. I don't remember the date of birth, but I can keep that blank. So you'll see here at the top, I have the option to save. I can also save and close, and it'll bring me back to the sales, or sorry, the dog section. So I'm going to save and close. And you'll see here I'm back to my dog's list, and I've got Rogue in here. There's another cool option with a newer CRM version. So if I open up this record, in the notes section, I can add notes here. So let's say... You know, I said, happy dog. I can even attach a file. So I can even attach, you know, a picture of the dog. And I can browse my computer. Oh, and look, there's a cute little Britney Spaniel. So I can add that in. Click done. And then I not only have a note, but I have a file that any other user could see if they wanted to. So pretty cool. All right, lastly, we're going to just look at creating a view. So when I'm in this entity, you'll see at the top I'm in dogs. When I say a view, I'm referring to this here, this list that will show me whatever I want to see on my record. So you can see it's pretty basic to start. It has a name and created on. And this is just the default active uh, view, which just means it shows all active records. But I can edit this. And the way we're going to edit that is, again, I'm going to go into that Customize the System section. So I'm going Settings, Customizations, and I would click Customize the System. So it pops open this window again, and then I would just navigate to my entity. So I'm already in the dogs. And you'll see here one of the sections underneath is Views. So I'm going to click that. It's going to give me all the available views. I can either create a new one or edit a previously uh, made one. So it just takes a little time to load again. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating a system-wide view. So I'm going to create a brand new one. I've got new up here and it's going to open up a new window. First thing, I have to give it a name. So I'm going to call it medium-sized dogs. 
I can put a description again. I'm just going to press OK. Make this window bigger so you guys can see it. So you'll see up here, the only column it's put in here is the name field. So there's a couple things I can do when creating a view. The first is I can edit the filter criteria. So on the right side here, here's where you have your options for editing your view. I'm going to click Edit Filter Criteria. Now what this does is it allows me to select fields within this entity that I want to filter certain things on. So for this one, I'm going to filter on the size. So if I scroll down here, you'll see I have my size field. I'm going to select that. I can say equals a certain value, contains data, doesn't contain data, begins with. You have quite a few options for filtering. I'm going to say equals. And then you'll see here, because this size field is an option set, I have this three dots, ellipses, that I can click on, and it gives me the options within that field. So I'm going to select medium. I'm going to move it over to selected values and press OK. So what I've done now is I've created this view that's based on where the size equals medium. I'm going to press OK. So that's the first thing. Now I want to add a bit more data to my view. I don't want to just see the name. I want to see other things. So you have to select a column first, anyone. And then you'll see here on the side again, it says Add Columns. So I'm going to click that. And you'll see here it shows me record type. So by default, it's the entity you're in. So the first thing I'm going to add, I'm going to add the breed, I'm going to add date of birth, dog owner I want to know, hair color I want on there, um, as well as the size. So I'm going to go, those are the fields I want on my view. You'll see here, it populates them here. The other option I have is I can move these around. So let's say the date of birth field I want at the end, I just select it, and I have these arrows over here and then I move it to the end. You know, dog owner, I maybe want over here, or at the end again, and I move it that way. So I've created a view. I'm going to save and close. And you'll see here now in my list of views, I have medium-sized dogs. Again, I've created a system-wide customization. I have to publish all so that it becomes available within my system. I'm going to go publish all customizations. Okay, now it's done. I'm going to go back here and refresh my system. So it's refreshed. I'm going to go back into my sales section, and then I'm going to navigate to my new entity dogs. And you'll see by default it still has the active dogs list or view here, but you'll see there's this arrow I can expand, and it's going to give me my available views. And here's my medium-sized dog. So I'm going to select this, and you'll see here I've got my columns I added in here. And because this record I created, I had the size as medium, it's going to show up in this list. If I created another record where the size did not equal medium, it would not show in this list because I filter by the size equaling medium. The other thing I can do with this is I can set this list to be my default list. So instead of having just that active dogs, which I originally had, what I can do, and any user can do this, is select the list you want. And you'll see this pin on the left side here. I'm just going to pin that. And now it's become my default list whenever I come into the dog's entity first. And there we go. Now, if you do not want to create or cannot create a system-wide view, users also have the option to create their own personal views. And it's very easy to find. In this list, if I do a drop-down, you'll see there's the option to create personal view. So if I select this, we do cover some of this in some of our previous training, but I'm going to show you just quickly. It pops open this Advanced Find window. When I say Advanced Find, 
Um, if I exit out of this, you'll also see in your systems, if you have this available, the advanced find icon up here, it's the same window. So that's why I'm calling it the advanced find window. So here's where it's showing me what view I'm already in. But if I want to create a new one, it's the exact same concept where I have to first select the field I want to create any filter on. So even if I wanted to do, oops, we'll do the same where size equals and instead of medium, I select all small dogs. So I move this over, go OK. I can also have the option to edit columns. So the buttons are just in a different place when you create your own personal view is the difference. So you'll see up here, I can click edit columns. It's going to open up that same window though. And you'll see here, I just have to select one of these columns. On the right side here, click add columns. Maybe this one, I just want to know the breed, who the owner is, and then size. But then maybe I want this dog owner field to be the first thing on my list. The other thing I can um, change within here is how I configure the sorting of my list. So you'll see here there's this little arrow beside name. So it's just sorting it that way. But I could also sort it by you know, breed alphabetically. And the way you do that is you just select the column. Or sorry, select configure sorting on the right here. And it gives you the options of what you want to sort by. So instead of sorting by name, I could actually just sort by breed, dog owner, any of the columns that are available to me on my view. So I can do it that way. You also have a then by, but we'll just keep it like that. And you'll see here, the arrow has switched. So again, I just press OK. And then before I do anything, I'm just going to save it. I'm going to give it a new name. So this is small sized dogs. I'm going to save that. And you can see here, it's already saved my name. So I can get out of this. Because I've created a personal one, I actually don't have to do any of that publish customization, but I do just have to refresh. And if I go to my list view over here, I open this up and you'll see there's this section now called my views, meaning this is a personal view I created. And here's my small size dogs. I don't have any records or sorry, any dogs that are the small size yet. So you'll see this is blank. But if I go back to that system one that I created for medium-sized dog, there's my medium-sized dog. And that pretty well concludes our training on just the basic customizations of CRM. Next month's topic, so again, the third Thursday of every month, so in March, we're going to be covering charts and dashboards. So these are pertinent to both system-wide as well as uh, user ones, so you can create your own personal charts and dashboards as well as system-wide ones available to everyone. Thanks again, everyone. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Again, please feel free to email me if you have any questions.